Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. Put off by how long this video is. Don't worry, I try to jam pack my videos with as much content and as much detail as I possibly can. Anything I feel I can comment on and that I feel you might be interested in, I pretty much put in the video. I try not to repeat myself and talk fairly fast. I know what you did last summer. Thoughts. It has been pointed out that the third act resolution is overly complicated. You can really tell that they added the murder of Max to, you know, ratchet up the tension to really, you know, make, to, you know, to tell the audience and the characters he is willing to kill. You're not only being stalked. He is actually willing to kill. And it does, you know, it does work for the tension and also, you know, really make it impossible for them to deal with the police because, you know, they, they'd be implicated and there's, yeah, it, it, they, at that point, they really do have to deal with them themselves, but you can also really tell that it was added in. It, you know, ultimately, you could pretty much cut the. You could basically cut Max entirely, at which I suppose is in part what Ben chose to do. But yeah, if if you did remove Max entirely from the film, you wouldn't really lose that much. You know, it really the the. It's, it's more interesting when it's about our four leads, really. But the, you know, the, as, as far as emotive goes, you know, it's, Max was threatening to go to the police, which would make it very difficult for Ben to get to the, the four. And you know, it is possible that either Max did realize something was going on, or that, or that Ben, rather, that Ben thought that Max knew something, or, you know, and, and just wasn't telling the, you know, hadn't told anyone, wasn't, but, yeah. And then you have the, the ridiculousness of him being able to move Max, you know, Max's body, out of the trunk and Barry off the balcony without anyone but the one female character seeing who then gets to scream yeah it's it's pretty ridiculous I do think that you know it's it's the the way he sort of echoes what they did to him is is pretty good that you know he stuffs max in a trunk the way they did to him the the main difference being that max is actually dead and that max wasn't one of the four but you know if if one of the four actually died before the the climax it would really be you know i mention in In, in my, well, yeah, let's just say that it is the, the kind of thing where if you want the, the characters to be, you know, going around and actually, you know, doing other things, then you do kind of have to hold off on the killing, at least of main characters, major characters because otherwise it does really affect the rest of the movie and you know yeah it it would really change it completely if yeah and i i find that the the climax does a good job of i mean when you really look at it you have two main characters dying a supporting character wait two supporting characters actually 
well, a really minor one-off. The, the cop you barely see, but, you know, Elsa, Helen's sister, is a supporting character. You know, yeah, you have these four kills, not just deaths, but kills, within a fairly short amount of running time overall, and then you have the the you know the chasing of all of these and the fighting you know yeah it's it's a lot in the climax and yeah i i find that it doesn't it's not moving too fast you know you get the impact of all of them and it's you know you do basically care i mean you may not really be you know that invested in the cop or Elsa but if nothing else it does you know further put you know Helen in danger but yeah you know they they stuff Max's body in the trunk it, it Ben stuffs Max's body in the trunk he runs Barry over even with his own car I I'm not entirely sure if it's like the same car. I want to say that I don't know. I'm I don't pay a lot of attention to cars honestly, but yeah, running Barry over with a car that he himself owns, and you know, there's the the thing with the the crown as well, and you know the stuffing Max in a trunk is also just in part of you know, he's a Quentin Tarantino fan. The actor who plays Ben Willis, Muse Watson, you know, after this he was in Prison Break as Charles Westmoreland, he was on NCIS as Gibbs' old friend. Yeah, I, I watched NCIS. I, I, I don't know. I guess I like the quirk. I, I, and, you know, I, I quite like him in basically everything I've seen him in. He is genuinely really creepy and scary here. I find the, the climax and trapping Jennifer on his boat is a pretty cool idea. You know, you have her running around. You, you, you know, you got to have them isolated. And it's really, you know, how else is she going to... You know, if she just jumps in the water and tries to swim back, I mean, she's not going to get away from him like that. He's a fisherman. He's, yeah. So she tries to hide from him, which is, of course, also, you know, very typical slasher. It's it's kind of, you know, when when Julie gets really scared, she sometimes, her IQ plummets like the rest of the movie she's being pretty smart you know she quickly comes up with you know a story when Missy spots them on her property and just you know she's the one who really goes and you know she's she's in charge of the investigation you might say and yeah just you know the, the major revelations tend to be on her part, you know, including that it was Ben that they ran over and not David. But yeah, you know, so having her on the boat, you know, she's running between rooms. She, you know, she she handles the, the ice that's supposed to, you know, keep the the two bodies really chill she handles it for way too long and way too much for her to not have like really like you know it would really like it might not like do damage to you know cause injury to her hands but that much ice she she would at least be like you know blowing on her hands to to keep the you know temperature yeah anyway you know, she goes through all of these different rooms on his boat, and, you know, because it's this old boat, of course, he can break down the door with the lock that she put on, and, yeah, just a, a lot of nice little, you know, I like, she climbs down into the boat, and, you know, there's the grating, and he grabs the grating with the hook, but she holds 
the grain down with with her weight and he can't lift that's a pretty cool little you know because it's it's really tense you're like he's almost got you know, she's right in there in his reach it's it's just but yeah and you know the yeah the the various chasing around the boat and him you know basically tricking her you know, I mean, it basically makes, you know, she's like, I, I have to call the police. And he says, you know, they're on the boat. It's like, you know, there's, I have a phone, it's on the boat. There you can call the police. And, you know, it would, yeah, you know, if that's the closest place she can get a phone, you know, it's again, like I said, you know, when, when Julie is scared, her IQ plummets. You know, she really shouldn't get on the boat of a stranger who, you know, she's just found out that it wasn't, you know, that, that the person they ran over may still be out there and maybe the person stalking them. So yeah, don't accept help, you know, it would maybe have made more sense if she, you know, if it wasn't that she, she, she didn't really trust Ray at the time, you know, so Obviously, as it is, it wouldn't have made sense for her to not want to leave because Ray is there and she wants to make sure he's okay. But that would basically have made more sense. Oh, yeah. But I, I quite like. Yeah, you know, he he gets her on boat. He, you know, takes off on the boat. You also really have to wonder why he doesn't do anything to Ray, you know, I'm not, maybe he's more focused on Julie, but, you know, and, and certainly for the entire movie, he has been taking his time, you know, he's been building up to this, but, I don't know, maybe at least dump Ray off the port, I mean, yeah, actually, if he dumped him off the port, that would be another echoing of what they, you know, of what they did to him, but, yeah, it's, it's again, the, you know, slasher writing kind of thing, yeah, but, yeah, you know, he gets her on the boat, and then he says, are you, are you troubled, child, or something like that, and she's, yeah, I'm actually really troubled, and, you know, it's kind of, both of them know that, what, who the other one is, and such, and, yeah, then, then you have the, you know, yeah, and he's like, ah, oh, that's too bad. You you should be out partying and getting drunk, running people over and leaving them for dead. And yeah, I I really quite like. It. I I think that he does really well with the the dialogue as well as just you know physically chasing. You know, there's you know you you see his face quite a bit for a slasher killer. But yeah, he it it works. The the he looks really scary, you know. And it is of course really really lucky for him that they ran that way, you know, that he could then clothesline Ray and get. Yeah, you know, it's it he's remarkably. He's always right where he needs to be. I mean, early in the film, it's basically just, you know, okay, I guess Helen left the door unlocked so that he can walk in. And we accept that the, the father doesn't notice because we just saw that he didn't really notice her coming in particularly either. And, you know, he gets, a, you know, it's fortunate for him that the timing just exactly works out with him getting you know, up the stairs just before she goes there, but, you know, it's, we accept some of that as just, you know, it's a horror film, and what we're seeing is supposed to scare us more than necessarily makes sense, but then he starts straight up teleporting in the climax, you know, he, he somehow gets, I, I, I mean, was, was he supposed to be the one who placed the, the, you know, who blocked off that one road, or did he just know that it was, and then he, excuse me, managed to have, you know, a car ready to be, you know, and the cop goes over to help him, and Helen screams when she, if, if she hadn't screamed, Ben wouldn't have been, you know, because he attacks, 
yeah, he, he might not have been able to attack before the cop got his gun out, and then, yeah. But then, you know, then she runs, and he's suddenly, you know, in front of where she ran to, you know, she's running, she's almost rejoining the, the parade, and, yeah. And he, he hides in the, the, you know, like, clothing, you know, with, with the mannequins, and somehow, you know, yeah, quickly manages to hide and look like he's supposed to be there. You know, it's, it's the, the iRobot problem with the, you know, trying to hide among a crowd. How did you find the space to be, ex yeah, but then you, yeah, and, and he jumps out at her, of course, and, you know, and, and he somehow managed to get both Barry and Helen to the, the, to the boat and then stand there and be ready to, to clothesline Ray, so that's quite impressive. And the, you know, I, I quite like the, the ending scare. I, I'm aware that some people don't like it and maybe don't like it in slashers in general. I, come on. It's, like I said, it, it, it only operates on a certain level of real world logic when it's a slasher. You gotta have, you know, it's, it, the, the fact that the killer can somehow hide from them for so long and always be ready and so easily kill these, you know, typically young people, you'd, you'd expect them to be able to, like, do more to fight back or something, but yeah, and he, you know, he always finds them isolated, he always finds them just, you know, one at a time, or sometimes two at a time, and yeah, it just, it, you, you gotta have, you gotta accept for a lot of that, and I really, I love when they have a good ending scare, I think that that is, you know, it's, it's that thing of the, the opening and the ending of any story is extremely important because it's the first and last impression that it makes on the audience. And, yeah, you got to have an ending scare. And it's just so, so built up, you know. It's, it's not just, like, thrown in. They, they really, you know, it even has the thing of, you know, oh, you got a letter. I got a letter, and you know Julie James, and she opens, and ah, oh, it's just it's a party invitation, you know, good thing, and you know she goes back, and then I still know, you know, and she's like looking to the, and then he bursts out through, and then you know rock music while the the credits play, it's, it's love it, and the, you know, it's it's funny with with Sir Michelle Beca Sir Michelle Geller becoming Buffy. You know, I I guess she started after this. I mean, this was also '97, but yeah, which you know, where she very much plays a very capable young blonde woman in the horror genre. In this, she is the the young blonde woman who looks great and who you know gets killed because she's the the attractive blonde. I do like that. You know, very early on, they point out that the story of the hook is supposed to scare girls away from premarital sex, which a lot of, you know, a lot of slasher stories are. Not all urban legends. Well, urban legends do typically have a moral component, moralizing. But the, the you know, yeah, she actually, she has sex with Ray not very long after, yet she's still one of the survivors at the end. And she's not the only sort of Ray survives as well, but yeah, I I do think that that's a a good little you know toying with expectations kind of thing. And you know Ben cuts Helen's hair, in part to you know it's it's like with the the crown that he grabs at the start when when they're dumping him, you know he takes something of hers, he takes something of hers that makes her feel especially beautiful kind of thing. You know, that and it is an overlooked source of edible protein. And Heish, you know, in, you know, in actuality lost 
a brother to suicide, which she's led to believe here. We we realize that it's Ben, but you know, if if you're gonna watch a thriller horror movie, you know, where some of the, the people actually lost, like there's this Danish movie called Merc, where the writer director lost a close family member to suicide, and the star lost one of his parents, possibly both of them. It's, all we know for sure about the second one is that the the man, you know, his father was drunk, and I mean, he, he drowned off the port. It's possible that he threw himself in. It's possible that he just, you know, didn't realize that he was, you know, going off the edge in, in drunkenness. But yeah, that's that's a great horror movie, which really, and, and that also really deals with the you know, having suicide really close to, you know, in, in this case, I don't know, maybe she chose the role and thought that it, you know, catharsis or something, but if she was cast because they were like, we could get some, you know, then she can really get, that's, that's a little eh, uncomfortable. When she's yelling, what are you waiting for? I think he might be waiting for her to just get back off the street and and she was almost run over before when she you know recoiled in terror from seeing the body in her trunk you know so she really should know better and the you know this Elsa is just the you know I mean you have the 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 ice and you know guys that may or may not be trustworthy that you know romantically get involved in but there's substantially less singing, and I I do quite like the when you you know some of the some of the details of the you know them figuring out who is stalking them and such and and you know, of course when they're doing you know the talent show you know near the end, you know, the, the, the singing, you know, and, and Barry's like, kill me now, and Ben is like, okay, but, yeah, the, the thing with, you know, for most, for, for a lot of this, certainly, they think that it might be David Egan, you know, he was out there, and the movie starts by establishing that David is out there, he's clearly, you know, sad and he's got the you know the the little medallion kind of thing and yeah you know the and he had been drinking and yeah and then when we see him run over like she said you know and, and we don't see his face because his face gets messed up and you know is that really is are they insulting Muse Watson are they saying his face looks like it was seriously messed up because it's not I mean I, th I think of it more like it's a face with character, you know, the man has has been through some stuff, but he's not like ugly, is it? but yeah, but the, you know, like they, I, I forget which of them, who's, I, yeah, I think it's Helen says that, you know, maybe he wanted to die, maybe he, you know, threw himself in front of a car, he was, he was up there, he was, Hoping you know, and then she's like, "Well, it helps you sleep uh, at night, you know." And it's like, "What, what happened to us? We used to be, you know." And and she's like, "We used to be a lot of things. We used to not have run over and killed a guy. We used to not be being stalked." But yeah, the the. I, I really like their super, like, the the one guy that, the first guy Helen sees in the, the fisherman's outfit that then walks off, and she's like to Barry and pointing, you know, I, and I feel like, I guess that's, it was before we started doing the whole, you know, so-and-so o'clock thing, because it, rather than pointing, it would probably have been easier if she just said, although, were they... On the same would they have seen the same anyway yeah the the 
that first guy, you know, he runs and he just pushes everybody. He's he's a jock. You know, you can tell. I mean, he may not actually be, I or did he actually become quarterback? I, I'm not sure, but he's definitely being a quarterback, chasing after, you know, pushing people out of the way, and then he jumps this guy. And the movie really wants to clarify, this is not the guy, definitely this is not the guy. He looks the most innocent, this sweet old man, you know, just, I mean, it's, he's practically like saying that it's, he's two days away from retirement and pulling out pictures of his grandchildren, you know, it's just, yeah. But the, yeah, the, the various details of, you know, it, maybe it was David, you know, he was, he was up there and it was a year after the, you know, the accident with his girlfriend and, you know, then you have the, you know, and, and that's when they're thinking, you know, well, I mean, we killed him, he was dead when, you know, so maybe it's Missy, she's, she's definitely creepy, she does a really good job of being creepy and, Still, you know, you can see how this is, uh, you know, I mean, she lives alone and she doesn't have a lot of human contact in general. So, you know, that's always something whenever they do, you know, red herrings in modern American horror movies, sometimes they go way too far. Sometimes it's like, okay, nobody actually acts like that. Nobody acts like that unless they're in a story where we need to believe that they're the killer or something, you know. Anyway, the, you know, so they think, and then, you know, maybe, maybe it's this Billy Blue who kills because he was like an old friend of David, you know, and they, well, maybe we should go with, you know, maybe we should go back to Missy and show her this, you know, the, the yearbook, and it's like, and, and Ray is like, I'm not going anywhere, and it's, you know, and and you can see and when they first say you know the name of Billy Blue, there is like this moment of oh crap and it's like, yeah I I think they did a pretty good job of that I mean you can only make Freddie Prince Jr. look so creepy but yeah I mean I I felt like it it worked you know the the first time I pretty much, I I bought every theory until we found out the truth really. But yeah, you know, you've got that whole thing, you know, and it's Missy there at the end, you know, when, yeah, when she tells, you know, she said, well, I found a, a suicide note, and it's, that's not a suicide note, that's a threat, you know, and, and she's right, because she can, you know, she recognizes this is how, you know, the killer has been sending messages, and then she's like, okay, it's not Missy. Because she mis you know, she's not leaving notes if she's misunderstanding notes to, you know. And they said, no, no, I, I know it was David. I saw a tattoo of, you know, what was it, M Melissa? Some, you know, the of her name. And she says, you didn't see anything. David didn't have a tattoo. And then it's like, because that's, you know, they didn't make a big deal of it, but we did see the tattoo there at the start, right before they dumped him. So, and, and it makes sense, you know, a guy getting a tattoo of his girlfriend's name. It's slightly creepy that Ben got a tattoo of his daughter's name on, but, you know, I, I know. some people do that, I, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, there, there are people who get tattoos of, like, their daughter and you know give an arm for her but yeah you know it, it's it does basically make sense you know she meant the world to him and then when she died he was like you know so he he's he's all about this whole anniversary killing thing you know you it's it's a good thing that it happened on such an eventful day, or it would be kind of boring, you know, if it, if it wasn't, if he wasn't going out and killing at least one person every 4th of July because of, you know, it's, and, and I do think that that's, you know, as a mystery, it works, you know, they think that they killed David Egan because he did, he was found having drowned not long after, and he did drown, but not because he, 
you know, threw himself in, but because he was thrown in. So they didn't kill David Egan crossing the road. David Egan had been thrown into the water, and then Ben Willis was crossing the road, and they killed, they thought they killed him. Yeah, that, it, it works pretty nicely. And then, you know, near the end, we didn't actually kill anybody, you know, and then, and, and that lasts for, you know, just a little, or was, or maybe they said that after, I, I, I'm not entirely sure, but yeah, you know, I, I guess technically they didn't quite kill him, but yeah, there, there really isn't that much of a fight there at the end, you know, it, it is coincidences, you know, the, the, I've already gone into some of these coincidences, but yeah, it's like they have, you know, the, the, the rope goes up and then suddenly, like, Ray is the one who releases the rope that last time, but it had already, like, gone part of the way up. It, it's almost like Final Destination kind of stuff in, in that, which I don't currently have any plans to review. I, I do quite like the first one. I've watched the second one. I, I've seen reviews of the rest. It's, it, it is kind of the thing where you can make one slash movie out of that. After that, it just becomes a bit too much but anyway yeah you know the somehow it just works out exactly and all Ray has to do is like release the rope or pull I, I don't remember exactly but yeah and then you know and Ben literally says the next time you leave someone for dead make sure they're dead and then they leave him you know and and the the guys oh it'll it'll probably wash up they usually do you know but I, I do quite like that they do actually, you know, at the very end, they they take, you know, his his hand gets cut off, which you know, so so he can now have a hook for a hand, like the the urban legend of the hook, you know, that, yeah, quite quite a good detail there. Please comment, thumbs up, and subscribe for more content.